Well, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining the BC Regional Tourism Secretariat Summit 2021 in collaboration with the Global Sustainable Tourism Council. We are just thrilled to have you here and to continue the conversation on sustainable destination management, even if we can't be together in person. My name is Dr. Kelly Bricker, and I am a vice chair of the GSTC. Uh, what I'd like to do is just give you a, a short intro into what is the Global Sustainable Tourism Council. So in 2007, a coalition of 32 partners initiated by the Rainforest Alliance, the United Nations Environmental Program, and the United Nations Foundation, and the United Nations World Tourism Organization created the GSTC. The purpose was to foster increased understanding of sustainable tourism practices and the adoption of universal sustainable tourism principles. In 2008, the GSTC partnership developed a set of baseline criteria organized around the four pillars of sustainable tourism, which ultimately formed the GSTC criteria. We had over 6,000 inputs from private sector, public sector, academia, and NGOs. The GSTC criteria is not a set of standards for developed countries only or for academia only. Truly, it is an inclusive process to create them. They have worldwide applicability suitable for developed and developing world, and they have applicability to large and small businesses, urban and rural communities. Everything GSTC is phrased positively rather than do not do. All of the technical work is done in English, but we have the criteria available in many other languages on our website. We also go through revisions every few years. So the GSTC industry criteria relates to sustainable management of the private sector travel industry. It is a criteria that um, has performance indicators for hotels and tour operators, but the industry criteria can be used as guidance for really any tourism business. The GSTC destination criteria relates to sustainable management of tourism destinations. As I mentioned earlier, the GSTC criteria is based on four pillars, not only environmental, but social responsibility, finding livelihoods and economic benefits for communities, cultural issues, and management of tourism at a destination level and tourism products. The substance of the sustainable development goals are found more specifically in the GSTC criteria as it relates to tourism. For the tourism industry applying the SDGs, GSTC destination criteria is the framework to use as the GSTC criteria are specific to tourism development. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity to just share a little bit about the GSTC. We do ask that you visit our website. All of the criteria is outlined and you can access it, as I mentioned earlier, in many languages. So our moderator today for this session is Jana Oppie, director at Good Place Institute. Jana comes with a wealth of experience in marketing, strategic planning of tourism and destinations, and the implementation of sustainable tourism, a true champion. From project management to the Slovenian Tourist Board to management of marketing agencies, and running a marketing department for the second biggest travel agency, Globe Tour, as well as brand development and strategic marketing for the travel industry with the Tolarenka 
marketing agency. At the moment, she manages the Institute Factory of Sustainable Tourism, good place responsible for development of the National Certificate Program, Slovenia Green. What a, what a remarkable resume and a remarkable leader to lead you through this fantastic session. Welcome, Jana. Thank you, Kelly, for this really nice uh, uh, introduction. And thank you for the GSTC to inviting me and giving me the opportunity to moderate these uh, first two workshops on today's conference. Um, so as Kelly already mentioned, my name is Jana Abich. I'm coming from Slovenia. Uh, I'm a director of the Good Place Institute. And um, on these two workshops, which I'm going to run. We are mostly going to speak about destination management and um, new trends and also how to work with the private sector within the destinations. So our first um, workshop is going to be focusing on Norway. Uh, Norway has just uh, um, developed a new strategy for development of uh, sustainable tourism. I think it's quite groundbreaking and I'm really impressed with what they did and how they set up the whole strategy. I think it's a great inspiration to many countries um, on the same path of renewing the, their uh, strategies. I know for sure it's uh, going to be one of our shining stars. Slovenia is about to, we are about to start working on a new strategy. I'm happy to be on board of the group who is going to be responsible for that. So going through a number of strategies, uh, national strategies, I really must say that this new approach uh, Norway is taking is very interesting. So I'm really happy that we have the opportunity now in this workshop to, um, to have a, a speaker from Innovation Norway, uh, Ingun Sorens. Um, and she will be explaining this uh, a little bit uh, wider uh, approach of how Norway is tackling new challenges in tourism. Um, and especially she will focus also on this new uh, way of calculating CO2 footprint, bringing that into the correlation with uh, how to lower the impact of, um, of um, on, on uh, climate change of tourism and of course how to increase the impact on low on locals and on the added value of the tourism itself. Uh, before we begin, before I introduce Singun, I would just like to shortly guide you through some housekeeping notes. Um, this session will be recorded so you will be able to watch it uh, also after the whole event. Um, three. 30 days and it's going to be on event platform. Um, the, pla the whole session will take 50 minutes and um, at the end we will have 10 minutes for questions and answers. So in case you have any question um, through the presentation, please just post it in the Q&A and I will go back to it once Ingun stops her, uh, finishes her presentation. So let me just introduce shortly our first speaker, Ingun Sorens. is a special advisor at Innovation Norway. Ingun started her career in the Ministry of Agriculture, Department of Rural Devo Development. After some years responsible for policy planning and international cooperation on di diversification and empowerment of women and youth with agriculture and in rural development, she moved to the State Bank of Agriculture before starting in Innovation Industry and Regional Development Fund. In both places, she was involved in funding, research, and development training programs. From 2004, she has been engaged as a senior advisor, special advisor in Innovation Norway, a governmental organization assisting innovation and economic development in several sectors in Norway, among them tourism. Her first task as a project leader on the strategic and operational work towards increasing sustainability in tourism. This led to innovative programs, sustainable destination, a certification scheme with a spe specific standard added to development process for destinations motivated to prioritize long-term sustainable destination management. Ingon is also a GSTC board member and part of International Standard Committee of the GSTC. Ingon, very warm welcome to you, and I give the floor to you. 
Thank you, Jana, uh, for the kind words. And uh, thank you also for the warm welcome to the BCRTS uh, from those wishing us welcome from there. And uh, also the GSTC introduction from you, Kelly. Uh, and this is a difficult task to start out the first uh, workshop with a task that is quite complicated, but not at least very, very important in these days where people are gathering in Glasgow discussing the future of our planet. So the minister said that uh, we are in the same canoe. Yes, we are all in the same canoe. And we have tried to elaborate a little bit in this here in Norway and looked at what could we do on these quite demanding tasks ahead of us. Of course, the, the corona has been devastating for many of our businesses and for the industry also. But growing back, it is some quite clear messages in which direction we should move. So first, Innovation Norway, she said, who are we? Yeah, we are the government's most important instrument for supporting trade and industry throughout Norway. And we have some focus industries. We have the tourism and creative industries, which I represent. We have the bioeconomy, the ocean space. We have health and welfare, smart societies and energy. And we have above all uh, a very important task in solving challenges in society through also industry development. And our task includes the national marketing mandate through Visit Norway. So we have both this development side and we have the marketing side in-house. And Innovation Norway have offices, not all over the world, but many places, about 30 countries. And we also have offices in each county here in Norway. And I'm right now standing in the head office in Oslo. So we are targeting uh, SMEs to a large extent with funding, advices, and so on. And especially during uh, COVID, the challenges in tourism uh, have been transferred like the rescue funds through us. So we have been very active the last months. Uh, so my theme today, was the climate actions and climate carbon or calculating and measuring carbon emissions. This is something that is more and more uh, actualized through the, the, the way tourism is not an own industry reporting to uh, any international organizations, but to a large extent tourism will face this through their different value chains. So we have uh, pre-COVID, we saw that the, the, the climate goals are set, the climate goals are in place, actually discussed heavily these days in Glasgow. Leaders are gathered for setting new goals aimed at stop, stop global warming. The ambitions are followed by a growing number of people eager to see actually, uh, actually things happening and eager to see that things and politics are put in place to assist the goals that are set. And the, uh, the trends we have seen the last years is that more and more people engage and more and more people want to make a change and be part of the change. And they want the industries, the politicians and the society to act now. So new words like flight chain enter the scene after years of strong growth in tourism. And in Scandinavia and other parts of the world, uh, world we have seen fast growing uh, schemes like train jo uh, journeys, train holidays, addressing the joy of slow travel, uh, integrating the 
travel as a part of the adventure, not separated for the adventure you are going to have on your holiday, but actually by traveling slow, you could use the travel itself as a part of your adventure and experiences during your holiday. And we have also seen businesses with a lot of creative and innovative uh, uh, measures, like uh, if you arrive by public transport, uh, you have uh, you can uh, you can then maybe have a free drink in the bar, or you could uh, could get a reduced price, or you could in other ends have incentives for uh, encouraging people to arrive in a climate friendly way. So the industry is quite creative and have done a lot to, to kind of meet the growing number of customers uh, that care for the way they are traveling. What we saw when we started, we were challenged by the press. A lot we were challenged when, when we were doing marketing work in distant markets we get a fight in the papers very often, more and more, during 2018, 2019. But what we also saw when we, when we worked into it is that tourism is in between sectors. And in Norway, as most of other countries, we follow national and international reporting schemes on greenhouse gas emissions and protocols. We report on industries and sectors complex measures and it is difficult to grasp that the numbers actually mean something for us and also the connection between the numbers and our daily work on developing the industry and attracting visitors so what does it mean tourism as such is not a measurable unit but hidden within the numbers on transport emissions construction agriculture and food and reporting areas like the use of values in marshlands, recreational areas and cities. All resources used in tourism and in the tourism ecosystem. So Innovation Norway Tourism Department is not a research institute on climate issues. So we needed to transfer complicated measurements down to specific actions to be able to handle it. So UNWTO have in their analysis showed that tourism will make up for 5.3% of all man-made emissions by 2030, while another study of Lensen says it's already around 8%. It depends on how you measure. 22% of global transport emissions comes from transport of goods and people. And what is quite important and were quite important for us when we started to work on this was that 75% of emissions from tourism as a whole is created by tourist transport. 25% is land-based emissions at the destinations. With these facts in mind, we have tried to look at some of the measures that we can perform as the institution or the organization we are on the road towards more climate friendly tourism. And we have looked at a system that uh, put transport first. So we look at transport specifically because you saw the numbers, 75% of the emissions comes from there. And in Norway in general, we have high ambitions for tran uh, transport on road, air, and C, becoming low emission. And the advice from the government is that we can change to cars, boats, and airplanes that emit less or no GHG gases. And 50% of the new car sales in Norway are already electric. And we can use more envi environmentally friendly forms of transport, like bikes, trams, railroads, and other sorts of public transport. And we can plan society so that the need for transport of goods and people are reduced. 
So all these advices that are given at a general basis in Norway will also uh, be advices that could be used in tourism. So we already have a scheme Jana introduced and told about uh, the scheme of sustainable destination. This is included in our reporting on the SDGs 12B uh, as a scheme uh, making it possible to monitor the long-term consequences of tourism. And we said that sustainable destination, we have to work with actions where things are happening. And as you know, throughout your destinations, it's not in the rooms of politics or regulations that the innovations happens mostly. It's out there in the destination, in the businesses. So we wanted to work with destinations working towards sus sustainability. And the DMOs that have entered this scheme, they have to, uh, to plan, to cooperate, to implement, and to measure uh, sustainability tasks in a broader scale. And the scheme drives competence and awareness for the local DMOs and makes it possible to monitor the progress. One of the criteria is to measure the carbon footprint related to tourist travels and put up aims to reduce those footprints. So here is the content of the, of the uh, calculator. We said that, okay, we have a standard and we are very happy to tell that this standard that we have, GSTC recognized it as aligned to their standard in 2018. So that's in place for the standard. Then we have put up a management work that make a, a plan for the destinations to, to have a project leader, they need a public private board or uh, they, they put up a steering group for the work, they have advisors and then there are external audits and Innovation Norway, the ability we have as a public institution with funds, we can fund a few of those destinations each year. Then we have put up a process and in the process is you, you start with involving and planning, then you implement and then you measure and then you monitor in the long run. Every three years you have to go through all the indicators, 104 in number and quite a heavy task. You have to register again to see your progress. And then we have put up tools for the destinations to be able to do this work. So there is a portal where you re register and you do your kind of homework. There is service, for instance, inhabitant service. So you have to survey whether the inhabitants are satisfied with the development of tourism locally. There are training and there are a national network built by the destinations. At the moment, we have 50, more than 50 destinations in the scheme covering the area of more than one third of the local municipalities in the country. So it's growing very fast. And then in the end, when you fulfill this, you work maybe two years, then you are given visibility in the end uh, and uh, awards, press and all these things that comes. And at the same time, we want to encourage businesses so we established green travel. This is quite simple. It is a sign that the businesses registered in Visit Norway has a certification. And if they are certified and have a valid certification, we are given them this green sign in our public tourism website with a lot of viewers and with 13 languages and quite a big outreach. 
Uh, at the same time, we have used the pandemic well, and it is uh, distributed grants and loans for innovations and green business development throughout the country. And a lot of the grants and funds have been transferred to tourism because they were hit and are hit very hard. So this has been a, a journey in, in trying to establish a broader sense of actions and uh, uh, actions that are possible to do for the destination and the businesses to reach next level green business development. And then Jana told about the national tourism strategy also, uh, what should I say, born during the pandemic. The national tourism strategy were delivered to the government in May 2021. It was a broad process. We involved uh, a lot of um, stakeholders in the industry throughout the country. It was roundtables. It was uh, it was uh, uh, seminars. It was one to one meetings. It was workshops and all these things were quite important to, to create the ownership for the strategy and also to be aligned with what people had of hopes for the future of tourism. And there was a very clear sustainability and the future of our country and planet was really in the core of all the meetings. So the, the strategy, it looks like this, and I have slightly twisted a translation. The, the strategy is about high yield, low impact, and low impact is addressing the issue of carbon emissions, especially, but also, uh, but also to a, a larger extent, the negative sides of, of, of tourism. But high yield is addressing what we want to achieve by tourism. So first, the, the strategy has quite a holistic perspective. We see that the companies that you see in top there, they are important for value creation in the local communities. And the communities, they add values like social and cultural extra values to the tourism product delivered to the guests and the guests again they add consumption to the companies so this is a kind of a circle and very important ecosystem where all parts have to be satisfied and therefore we said we need mutually dependent goals it is quite important that the goals are uh, uh, the, the goals that we are agree on the goals in a larger extent that there is an ecosystem behind this. So we said uh, profitability and jobs, of course, is very important, the local value creation. And then the ripple effects is not just tourism who has the joy of tourism, the local communities uh, that live uh, people living there, they also use the tourism services. They, they are kind of intervened into the tourism product. And then we say we need guest satisfaction because happy guests are eager to come back, stay longer and use money. That's, the, that's what everyone is striving for. And then to be able to do this, we need attractive local communities and happy residents. Because imagine coming to a place where nobody wants you as a tourist. It's not a good, uh, a good experience. You need happy residents to be able to deliver a truth worthy and, and, uh, and uh, a quality tourism product. But these arrows goes up, as you see, but there is one arrow going down and need to go down, and that is the climate footprints. We all know that in our 
future. This is an emergency theme that coming are coming stronger and stronger. So towards 2030, you see the arrows going up and there is one arrow going down. And then we put on some, this is a lot of text and maybe too small, but we put up some KPIs and there are some goals on this. And we say that Norwegian tourism shall contribute to national goals of becoming a low emission society through reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the local tourist industry by 50% by 2030. This is aligned with our national goals. Then we say we also must have the highest possible proportion of visitors with a high value creation effect and low carbon footprint. And that is some kind of framework for which tourists we should uh, target. And the carbon footprint resulting from visitors transport to, from and around in Norway must be reduced by 10% a year using 2019 as a starting point. And that is quite maybe sad to say that this goal was easy to reach during the pandemic, but it's still something we, we need to count on and we, we are not using the pandemic as a kind of uh, easy way to, to reach that goal. And we also say that we must be a driving force in the decline in greenhouse gas emissions for the transport sector as a whole. So we looked into this and we ended up with a tool that we called CO Tourism. We think that was a quite, uh, quite a descriptive name that described the, uh, the wishes we had for the, for the, uh, for the tool. Because we said uh, the very first edition we developed also under the pandemic and therefore created in a time where focus has been on survival for the industry, change and restart. Uh, we are still therefore not in full operating modus. There is still a need for further development and implementation. Just so you know that, that this is not the end of the road. We are still trying to find a good solution. Uh, and as you remember still, I guess, estimates shows that the large part of emissions from tourism derives from transport, 75%. We started looking at this. So we have tried and tested ways of using data and tools with a simple interface to make complicated facts easier. And we wanted a tool with data that support and advise priorities and strategic planning for people like us. We wanted to have some, some guidance in how we could plan strategically our markets. So first we wanted to look into a different way of measuring tourism and greenhouse gases to be used by also the destinations for counting CO2 emissions related to their tourists and marketees for those seeking data for priorities based on CO2. We combine data from many sources providing, provided to us by the Norwegian Institute of Air Research with our own service on tourism markets where departure, which country uh, the tourists came from, the main travel modes and travel in Norway were a part of the survey. So the tool is for planning and strategic decision. It is not a consumer facing calculator. I, I guess you, you all have seen one, maybe tried one that can calculate your own emissions going on holiday. This is a planning tool. It starts and it ends a bit different than the, the consumer facing calculators. It measures direct CO2 emissions per transport mode, and it is based on travel distances from the destination to Norway and back again and in Norway. 
and it, it is based on the best available tourist data. The overall principle is that there are three legs and you don't have to go into all the complicated details in the, I just wanted to show you that we have counted three legs. We count the travel from your departure country to Norway. The next leg is from arriving Norway to your destination. And the third leg is the movement or the transport you have on your destination, at the destination. And together, these three legs form the CO2 emissions per tourist, per market. So the next we did was to look at the data, uh, uh, look at the data and see how can we put up this as simple as it is quite tempting to use, or how can we make this that is quite complicated and diverse to, to, to extract it so that people feel it's easy to use. And I am completely sure we are not there yet but we are on the way. So we put up, it is the light gray line that you can see, that's all. That's the, that's the CO tourism is there, all of it. Uh, so you put on, you choose whether you want to look into leisure travel or you want to include business travel. Then the next you go to is defining your region. So we have the numbers for the regions, they are default, but if you want more specific data, you need to know where your tourists come from. Then we put up uh, um, uh, the number of guests. It could be default, but you could change the default numbers. Then the next is the length of stay, because we say, we know that the length of stay has something to do with the total emissions needed to inhabit or make happy tourists in a place. If tourists stay longer, leave more values added at the place, we don't know, need so many of them. It's a very, very simple, uh, very simple thinking behind this. And then you could choose to put in the markets if you have the overview if you know your markets you could use that if not you have a default button that will inhabit with the numbers from the different markets to your region so that's the the way so the next one shows and here don't get confused by all the all the different colors and uh, and uh, arrows and things here i will assist you the first circle we have put up is canada so that you can follow the line of canada uh, but here are the different markets shown and then you can put in your numbers your guest numbers and then you can see the green squares they will show you the kilos CO2 emissions per guest, they will, the next uh, column will show you the kilos per guest per day. The next one will show the tons of CO2 emissions in total from that market. And then you can put the red, uh, where the red arrow, arrow is, put the blue circle and then the picture down here will, will uh, come up. And this shows that uh, the leg one, the international transport, leg two, regional, leg three, local, of oh, guests coming from Canada, 99%, 99.63% uses plane. So you can see the transport mode from each of the uh, uh, from each of the different legs. So this is, and you can even put it on one more 
level of details. But this is the way we have tried to visualize what transport modes do have the highest effects on emissions and what parts of the travel has the highest or lowest or how does it spread during your travel. If you scroll down, you can also see the same markets and see the average emissions per person, or you could have the, average, the total emissions per market. So you can just use the, uh, the upper left circle, red circle, and then you can switch between these two levels per person or per market. And this, I am not going to pull you through this. I'm just going to show you that the, that the data sources are quite wide. It's many of them. And we are very sure that especially the climate data has very high quality. Uh, the tourist data is not statistics. It's from analysis and service that we have, but we have also gathered information from the, uh, the aviation uh, company running all the airports in Norway. And there is a quite, quite diverse uh, customer, uh, customer um, numbers or data also going into the market purpose uh, column here. So this has been a huge job and uh, I have been involved in it and, and many times I felt uh, very, very small when you are dealing with such, uh, uh, such challenges and such uh, way of using data. But it's still possible. So by doing this, we feel that we have tried to look into what I said was the headline in the, in the strategy and that we are operating through our certification scheme of sustainable destinations. That we want high yield customers with low impact. And this was just a test we had uh, under, the, the, under the strategy. So we said, okay, what is the consumption in Norwegian crowns per kilo of CO2 emissions? And then we could play with the numbers and see which, kind, which guests had the highest consumption uh, split on their, um, on their emissions by coming here. So this is also some, uh, some uh, work. We have now uh, received funding from the ministry to elaborate further in this and to, to, to go a step further in working on the, uh, on the second calculator at the same time as we do the first one better. Uh, so the opportunities and key messages I want to send is first, I hope I haven't killed you with a lot of details. That's the first, but we say that the opportunities at national level is that monitoring national tourism emissions is an opportunity. And I think it will come more and more. Um, uh, risk analysis, we have the, uh, the EU work on taxonomy and everything that push in the direction of knowing more. You need to know more. And we also have to develop low emission market priorities and look into that. And by doing this, we feel that also we are aligning with the GSTC standard who want us to look at the climate issues. And at destination and business level, you can monitor your work through the indicators. And this is also an encouragement for the mobility projects happening locally so that they can actually measure something when they go into different uh, development projects and it is of course as we also mentioned this flight shame and the trends and the changes in the market it is a market potential uh, by attracting the future generations 
to visit. So the key message is here, and you see the ice <laughs> photo uh, melting, that there are no greenhouse uh, uh, gas reporting on tourism in Norway, but by using passenger-based accounting, we could have a source for accelerating climate actions. And high yield, low impact could guide market considerations and low emission transport forms. But, and there is a but, climate actions in tourism demands new competencies. We, as an NTO, we do not have the competences. So we need a broader uh, ecosystem to cooperate with in this case. And it is needed a, a cross-sectorial perspective. We have to look outside of tourism. We have to look into also other industries. And the very last here, I just want to say that also tomorrow, there are people trying to 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 create this as an even more important theme by putting up the climate initiative from tourism through the glasgow declaration presented tomorrow in glasgow so thank you so, thank you england for yeah, this really uh, nice yeah, I, uh, i'm sorry jana i just want to show the last that there are sure if, i'm sorry if people are not too bored, they can read further on here, because here we have some information. Uh, yeah, the background paper, the methodology and a scientific paper on, on what we did. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ingen. I think this was a great presentation and we had a lot of comments in the chat about that uh, it's inspiring to listen to Norway as a as a leading country in this kind of thinking and that other countries should actually follow the same, the same pattern. We are more or less over time. So um, I will just, we can maybe leave some of the questions sort of for, also for the second uh, panel, but maybe just uh, a, a quick question from Taya. She's asking, is this, um, has this impacted also your priority when targeting um, visitors um, and uh, yeah. Uh, yes, and what I said, we are not to the end of this and this is discussed. Yes, it is in the discussions and during the pandemic and now in the recovery, we are targeting the closed markets, we are. and But we still need to, to kind of find a more systematic approach in, in using it so that we put up some reference values or such things and, and that we seek to do with the new calculator. Yes, so next, mm -hmm. next step. And here we have an interesting comment from Mark. He is the significant GAGs uh, and local pol pollutant emissions are created by cruise ships. Invaded emissions must include transit from home port to port of call and any birthing while in any port. Bergen has set limits to ship calls. Will this limited limit be in effect in 2020? Do you see further limits to these floating resorts, uh, large ships? How are infrastructure costs captured from the cruise industry to create infrastructure? So your challenges with the cruise ships, we were talking a lot about that in our last yeah. call. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, of course, um, uh, we also counted cruise, but we were not able to put it fully integrated in the calculator. But we have the numbers. And for instance, like uh, when you see that tourism in general, I said we put up length of stay, so the numbers, for other transport forms will look better if you prolong your stay. For cruise tourism, it's the opposite. And, and of course, this could be for increasing knowledge. This is not a regulatory uh, tool. So, but, but cruise tourism is discussed all over the country. Yes, of course. So, uh, and, and, and there are, both technology and uh, local quite heavy discussions. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> I can imagine that. So I think we should wrap up our first workshop here. We have really a lot of comments about uh, congratulating Norway for this model and this approach. And people are really interested in um, your achievements. I think everybody is going to follow on your <laughs> next steps in the next year. So you have a lot of challenges still ahead, of course, um, which is always a good thing, I would say. Um, so um, dear uh, participants, I would like to thank you for your attention uh, in this first workshop. I'm sure everybody found it very interesting and inspiring. And we will have now a short 10 minute break. And so we are back in 10 minutes and we go on with the next workshop, uh, focusing on cooperation between the DMOs and the private sector. And uh, with this workshop, we will also have Ingon in the panel. So if uh, later on some questions regarding Ingon and uh, the approach Norway is taking uh, will come up, so you are still able to put them in Q and A a section and we will try to answer as many as possible but i'm sure that ingon will be also happy to to share her thoughts and experiences later on through some one-to-one -one, uh, conversations and so on so thank you for now thank you ingon and see you in 10 minutes <laughs>